Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install Prime OS on your desktop or laptop. If you haven't heard of Prime OS before, it's essentially an Android-based operating system designed to run on PCs. Installing Prime OS is pretty straightforward. If you've installed an operating system before, this process will be straightforward and easy to follow. I've tested Prime OS on two separate machines and it performed exceptionally well on both. Just follow the video carefully, and by the end, you'll have Prime OS up and running smoothly on your system. Alright guys, let's get started by downloading Prime OS file first. Open your web browser and go to the search bar. Type in Prime OS and press enter. And from the results, click on the official link, primeos.in. It's important to make sure you're visiting the correct and official website to avoid downloading the wrong or potentially harmful version. Once the Prime OS website loads, you'll see several options for download. Under the device drop-down menu, select x86 version, which is the version meant for standard desktop and laptop computers. If you happen to be using a Raspberry Pi, there's a dedicated version for that as well. But for this tutorial, we'll focus on installing Prime OS on an x86 machine. Next, under the version drop-down, choose the latest available version. At the time of this recording, that's Prime OS 2.1.3, which is based on Android 11. This version offers improved performance, better compatibility, and a more modern Android experience. Now, go to the Type drop-down menu and select ISO. This is important because we'll be using this ISO file to create a bootable USB drive, which we'll later use to install Prime OS. Once you've made all the selections, click the Download Now button. Your download will begin, and within a few minutes, depending on your internet speed, the Prime OS ISO file will be saved to your system. While Prime OS is downloading, the next step is to get a tool that will help us create a bootable USB drive. For this, we'll be using Rufus, which is lightweight, reliable, and widely used for creating bootable media. Open a new tab in your browser and type Rufus into the search bar. From the search results, click on the official Rufus website, rufus.ie. Once you're on the site, scroll down a bit until you see the download section. Here, download the latest version of Rufus. It should be listed right at the top. This small executable doesn't require installation. Once it's downloaded, you can run it directly to start creating your bootable PrimeOS USB. Once both PrimeOS and Rufus have finished downloading, the next step is to create a bootable USB drive. First, open the Rufus application. Then, insert your USB drive. I recommend using a drive with at least 8 gigabytes of storage. Rufus will automatically detect it and display it in the device section at the top. Next, under the boot selection field, click on the select button and browse to choose the Prime OS ISO file that we downloaded earlier. You can leave all the other settings at their default values as Rufus will automatically configure them based on the ISO file. Once everything looks good, simply click the Start button to begin the process of creating your bootable Prime OS USB drive. The USB has finished flashing successfully, so I'm going to close Rufus now. It's time to move over to the PC where I want to install Prime OS. In my case, I'm using an HP mini computer, and to access the boot menu, I press F9 as soon as the system starts. This brings up a menu that allows me to select the boot device. If you're using a different brand, the key to access the boot menu may vary depending on the manufacturer. Some systems use F2, others might use Delete, Escape, or even F12. Make sure to look up the correct key for your specific machine. Once you're in the boot menu, select the USB drive you created earlier. The system will then begin to load Prime OS. After it loads, you'll see the Prime OS boot screen with several options. Use the arrow keys to scroll down, then choose Advanced Options. From there, select Prime OS Auto Install to specific hard disk and press Enter to begin the installation process. The system is now booting from the USB drive. And the next step is to choose the storage device where we want to install Prime OS. In my setup, I have two drives connected, a 500GB hard disk and a 128GB NVMe SSD. 
I'll be installing Prime OS on the NVMe drive, as it's significantly faster and more reliable for running an operating system. If you have only one storage drive installed, you can simply select that one for installation. Once I've selected the NVMe drive, I'll press Enter to move forward with the process. When prompted, I'll confirm auto installation by selecting Yes. Prime OS will now begin writing the necessary files to the selected hard disk or SSD. This process will take a few moments. Once the installation is complete, choose Run Prime OS. Once Prime OS loads, you'll be prompted to go through a quick setup. Just enter some basic information. Click on the Proceed button to begin. Next, enter your username and choose your time zone from the list. Once you've done that, click Proceed again. You'll then be prompted to accept the terms and conditions. Go ahead and accept them. PrimeOS will now begin its initial setup, configuring everything to get your system ready for use. This may take a few moments, so just sit tight while it completes the process. Congratulations, PrimeOS is now successfully installed on your PC. Let's start by connecting to the internet. You can connect to Wi-Fi just like you would on an Android smartphone. Simply select your network and enter the password. In my case, I've connected the computer via Ethernet for a more stable connection. Once you're online, you can sign into the Play Store. I've already signed in, but if you haven't, just follow the prompts to log into your Google account. After that, you're free to search for and download any apps or games you like. Primos is a lightweight operating system, which makes it perfect for smooth gaming and multitasking. You can also access the Gaming Center from the Start menu. It provides real-time stats similar to Windows Task Manager. As you can see on my system, the CPU usage is only 12%, RAM usage is 2.23 GB out of 8 GB, and on my 128 GB NVMe SSD, it's using just 4.3 GB, a very efficient setup. That's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, if there's another operating system you'd like a tutorial on, let me know, I'd be happy to cover it. And if you like the video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials like these. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in next video.